Hi, my name is Albert Sarvis. I'm an assistant professor of geospatial technology here at Harrisburg University. Today I'm going to talk about projections and how they apply to the technology of geographic information systems. When we talk about geographic information systems, we are essentially referring to the fact that we can bring in all sorts of spatial data and layer them upon each other in a two-dimensional map environment or the screen. We look at points, lines, and polygons, and we're not going to talk about GIS specifically today, but how do we get all those different spatial data sets together lining up and accurately represented within a map? Uh, we want GIS to be precise and accurate in its measurements and ability to do analysis. And so pulling in spatial data from lots of different locations around the Earth and overlaying them and getting them to line up properly uh, is an issue, especially since we're trying to model a three-dimensional Earth. Generally, um, you know, as everyone knows, the Earth is not flat. In fact, it's not even round. It's ellipsoid and bumpy and, and irregular. The maps that we make and we view on in GIS or on the screen are 2D abstractions of reality. So we really are taking that curved surface of the Earth and trying to flatten it out onto a flat 2D environment. So how do we do that? Um, typically, you'll see lots of different ways that the Earth is represented. When you look at the Earth as a whole, we can't flatten it out neatly um, and show everything without having some sort of distortion. So there are lots of different projections. Today I'm going to talk about specifically the types of projections, different uh, methodologies used to flatten the Earth out onto a 2D map and try to protect and preserve as much of the true shape, size, area, direction um, of the features on the Earth. So the Earth is round, roughly. And we measure that based on angles. We measure out from the center of the Earth. So we're talking about latitude and longitude. Those are degrees, not actual real measurements. Latitude is measuring north to south and longitude east to west, things we've learned in elementary school. The Earth then, as you measure out from the center of the Earth, you're measuring angular degrees. And that's because it's a 360 degree sphere. So we measure those in degrees, minutes, and seconds. And because the Earth is round, we have 360 degrees to work with. Uh, and we represent a given location on the Earth as its latitude, degrees, minutes, and seconds, north latitude, for example, or 77 degrees, 11 minutes, and 20 seconds west longitude. These are ways we express that location on the surface of the Earth, but we're still measuring angular distance on a curved surface, where maps are actually flat. So a map, uh, whether it's a piece of paper or up on your GIS screen, is still two-dimensional, and we measure where we are based on, this is going back to geometry, a Cartesian coordinate system where you have an X and Y axis and you measure yourself where you are within that coordinate system. Typically, we measure in the positive upper right corner of that coordinate system and measuring is called eastings and northings in, that, in this particular case. We'll get into details of that in a minute. But when the Earth is flattened, we can see from the slide that we take those lines of latitude and longitude and roll it out, flatten it onto a Cartesian grid, the Earth looks like it does here in the slide. Uh, there's major distortion where the Earth has been stretched. What we try to do with projections is get that three-dimensional Earth onto a two-dimensional map or screen in the case of GIS with the minimal amount of distortion. So projections typically are trying to minimize at least one distortion. Those categories of distortions could be grouped as distance, direction, shapes, and area or the size. It's impossible though to preserve all of those things in one projection. So what we're trying to do with projections is depending on our purpose, choose a projection that meets our needs, whether we want to measure distances more accurately or actually develop the angles or the directions more accurately. There are four types of projections uh, broadly categorized, conformal, equal area, equal distant, and equal azimuthal or true directional. Conformal is trying to prefer, preserve the shape. Equal area is trying to preserve the actual measurable area of those features on the Earth. Equal distance is you know, obviously for measuring along straight lines, we have accurate measurements. And the true direction projections typically used for navigation or satellite navigation or, or uh, aerial photography or uh, planes is called a true direction projection. Those are the types of categories that we go with. So let's talk about projections uh, in a geometric manner. We have planar projections, cylindrical projections, and conical projections that you see in the slide. Essentially we're trying to take the earth, the sphere of the earth, or the ellipsoid as it is, and project it out onto a flat surface. And so this slide shows you that flat surface and how the Earth would be stretched out to meet, meet and be represented on that surface. Likewise, to if you imagine projecting a bright light through the Earth so that you can see how it would fall out onto that flat surface, we have three different types of what we would call light source locations. They're genomic, stereographic, and orthographic. Orthographic being often the most typically used, 
but we're trying to, as you can see from the slide, this is how we're actually projecting. The straight line that runs straight left to right on this particular slide, where that occurs in the middle in each instance is where the least amount of distortion is. And as we stretch that curved surface out further to meet the plane of the projection, we're causing more distortion. So the point to take away here is the place where the projection touches the earth is where it's most accurate. So for these surfaces, the cylindrical, planar, and conical surfaces of projections, a normal would be straight up and down, you know, touching at the equator for both conical and cylindrical. We move on to tan transverse, which is a tangent to the normal projection. So now we've switched our cone so it's actually touching the earth on a line of latitude. Likewise, a conical projection touches the earth on a line of latitude now. Excuse me, longitude. Um, and the planar projection touches on the equator. So we've flipped our projection 90 degrees. In an oblique projection we can take multiple different angles and what we're trying to accomplish here is rather than just having the tangent or the touching point of that projection on the earth at the equator or at the poles, now we can align that tangent to wherever we want on the earth. And the point here is that we're trying to preserve the shape, distance, direction, and area of the Earth as accurately as possible where this particular um, projection touches the Earth. So oblique allows us to move that around to different places. So here's an example of a Mercator projection. We've got a normal at the top where we're, our conical projection is touching at the equator and it's stretched out and you can see that. We've got a transverse Mercator line which is again 90 degrees from the normal uh, and it's running along a line of longitude and so you can see that. And then oblique where we've realigned it again so that that point again where the plane is touching or the projection is touching the earth is going to have the least amount of distortion and we're trying to optimize that for a particular location in this case. Just another way of looking at this also I've shown you tangent uh, projections where we touch at one point on the surface of the earth. You can also have secant projections where they pass through the earth and you have two places where it touches the earth. So in this slide here the secant is actually slicing through the earth um, it, in the case of uh, conical and cylindrical, we're actually touching the earth in two different locations. So we've got that accuracy of the projection is better at two locations and not just one tangent point. So again, more ways to try to eliminate that, that distortion. I'm going to try to more or less wrap up with looking at projections that are used commonly within the United States. We typically use universal transverse Mercator or state plane coordinate systems when we're looking at the smaller area of one you know, state or a region within the United States is the example I'll use here. Transverse Mercator has 60 different zones across the world divided up um, by degrees of longitude and the state plane coordinate systems break up the United States into multiple pieces and I'll have a, a diagram here in a second that shows how we've taken smaller areas of the United States and created our own small projection areas specifically to those states. So UTM, or Universal Transverse Mercator, uh, the large diagram here shows all of those 60 zones across the uh, Earth. Again, lines of longitude are uh, defining those zones and they're numbered 1 through 60. The east coast of the United States, for example, is UTM zone 19, 18, and 17 moving east to west respectively. So state plane coordinate systems are designed to preserve the, um, the shape, area, distance, and direction within a smaller area such as the southern zone of Pennsylvania. These state plane coordinate systems are lined up with a Cartesian coordinate system where the axis or where the X and Y lines cross is in the southwest, is to the southwest of the area we're, we're interested in mapping. So we have distance measured in the y direction moving to the north is called a northing. Distance measured in the x direction moving to the east is called an easting. Uh, and we typically measure those in feet and meters, so we're really getting down to details at a state or substate level at this point. So that wraps up my overview of projections. Uh, this is taken from a subset of slides used for an entire class or several classes on projections and how they're applied to GIS. If you want to find out more about projections and geographic information systems, um, check out Harrisburg University. Thank you.